Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds. So this is where I like to collect together all the different music that I've purchased over the past week and present it to you. And I get it from different places like uh, local record stores, but also online retail like Amazon, eBay, and more. And for this past week, I've got uh, 10 releases to go through with you, of which seven of these are new releases, one is a band website release, and then I've got two used albums to go through as well with you. But before we dive into all of that, if you are new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music just like this with uh, New Music Finds episode number 31 and these 10 uh, releases here that we are going to go through. And so as we always do, we kick off with uh, brand new releases. So from this past Friday, September 17th, we've got Billy Idol, The Roadside. It's an EP, four songs on it. Uh, they're all original songs too, which is good. No covers on this. We get uh, pure Billy Idol here. First new material in seven years. It was produced by Butch Walker, which is really cool. He comes from uh, Marvelous 3 and, of course, uh, the glam metal band South Gang. But he's worked with uh, Weezer and Green Day and a number of others. And in addition to producing, he also plays on it. So uh, drums, bass, guitar, and keyboards are handled by him, uh, which I think is a nice addition to uh, Billy's band here in terms of uh, what he's providing and so forth. But of course, we've still got Steve Stevens here on guitar as well. He's as much a part of Billy Idol's sound as, of course, Billy Idol is. And Billy's sounding as good as ever on this. To me, these four songs are very classic sounding, could have easily appeared on any of the older albums. Um, I'm very excited for this. I'm really enjoying it. I've done a full review of it. And I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check out the full review. Um, but otherwise, I do recommend uh, checking this out if you're not familiar with it yet. All right, next one up, new release also. Lindsey Buckingham, self-titled release, seventh uh, solo album from him, first in a decade. Um, so, you know, interesting in that, um, you know, in 2017, he, he did an album with uh, Christine McVie, so it was Buckingham McVie. Uh, so there's that, but in terms of solo albums, first in a decade, and of course this is post his uh, removal from Fleetwood Mac, so, First one where a uh, true solo album here from him. And he handles everything that's on this. So all the vocals, instruments, he also does uh, production engineering and mixing on it. And uh, in my opinion, easily one of his best solo albums. It is just that good in my opinion. 10 tracks on it. Uh, it's about 36 minutes long. I do wish it was a bit longer, but uh, the first three songs alone on this are stellar. Uh, definitely uh, worth checking out if you are a Fleetwood Mac fan and or have ever listened to solo Lindsey Buckingham in the past. All right, another new release that came out, Candlebox, Wolves. Uh, seventh studio album by them and first in five years. So, um, you know, great to have these guys coming back. Now, the content of this, it's a little different. It doesn't quite have that Candlebox sound. Uh, at least of the earlier albums, they have been uh, branching off into some other stuff. They've got, uh, you know, different members in the lineup now and whatnot. Um, we still got Kevin Martin on vocals here, so you've got that aspect of uh, Candlebox. But it has been branching out a bit, and so this one's taken me a couple listens. I do enjoy it, but it's not quite the uh, classic Candlebox sound that uh, we all know and love. So definitely check it out, uh, but I do think it is a good album and worth exploring. All right, next one we've got here goes to Toad the Wet Sprocket, starting now. Uh, seventh studio album for them as well, first in eight years. Now, uh, alternative rock band from the late 80s, early 90s, and, uh, you know, I think they've been together the whole time. I don't know if they ever broke up, but um, been a long time since they put something out here, so really good to be getting that. If you remember what they sounded like in the when they started out, this stuff still fits right in that vein. When I popped this on, I was like, wow, still has that uh, very classic sound to it. So um, very exciting. If you're a Toad the Wet Sprocket fan, do check that one out. Next up goes to Dream Theater, Master of Puppets Live in Barcelona from 2002. This is the fourth in a series of uh, the Lost Not Forgotten Archives. 
So they've been uh, digging into their archives and re-releasing some things that they had put out as uh, uh, their, on their band website release only. And they're also doing some new stuff um, you know, they had never archivally that had never been released and whatnot. So this one here covers the album in full from start to finish, the metallic album, of course, Master of Puppets. The uh, material is pretty much played note for note on this, uh, at least, you know, as best as my ears can tell, but it's the vocals on it that are interesting to hear James Labrie uh, sing on it as opposed to uh, James Hetfield. So it's kind of a fun album, a, a what if, like uh, if uh, Metallica had a uh, vocalist, uh, yeah, I don't want to say a better vocalist, but a different vocalist, um, you know, somebody like James Labrie singing kind of a thing. Definitely worth checking out, though, for Dream Theater fans. I'm enjoying it. All right, next one is an interesting one, another new release here. Dee Dee Verney and the Cadillac Band, Let's Rattle. So uh, Dee Dee Verney, of course, being from Overkill. So you've got the thrash metal bassist here doing a big band swing style album. And what's even cooler than that is most of these are original songs that he wrote. So as opposed to this just being cover songs that D.D. Verney is doing, he actually wrote these and they're really good. Um, you know, I can't say I'm a huge fan of, uh, you know, big band swing or that sort of style. But um, I don't know if you guys know who the Reverend Horton Heat is. Um, of course, you probably would know who, um, you know, Brian Zetzer of... Uh, uh, the Stray Cats and that sort of stuff. So if you know those, any of those groups, that's what this is like. It's very cool uh, along those lines. And uh, I'm, it's a fun release, uh, so I'm enjoying it. All right, the uh, next and final new release of uh, this past week goes to Bob Dylan, uh, Springtime in New York. This is part of his bootleg series, number 16, covering the years from uh, 80 to 85. So features uh, outtakes, rehearsals, and... Um, alternate takes and it covers three albums during that five-year period so shot of love from 1981 infidels from 1983 and empire burlesque from 1985 but this is a cool one here now others may be like this i don't know this is the first one that i'm buying of his and it uh, comes in a box here so you you get the discs and a book that's in this and uh, there's the back side of it. It's a two disc set, so I didn't pick up the full, I don't know if it's a four or five CD box set, the big thing here, I chose to pick up the two CD one. But you still get a nice packaging on this. So I'm gonna pull this out here. And uh, you do get two discs with it. And um, it's got the track listing and uh, you know whether it's an outtake or whatever, and the disc slides out from the inside in it. And I'll just open this one so you can see it as well. But the booklet is where it's at. This is a nice um, booklet. It's a thick booklet and um, lots of great stuff that's within here. Look at all the, the writing and the photos and things of that nature that are within this. This is just a really great, um, if I flip that for you a little bit better, um, you know, booklet full of information and stuff. I wasn't expecting that. I kind of thought this would be a two CD diggy pack or jewel case or something along those lines, and it ended up coming with a bit more. So I was uh, pleasantly surprised about that. And I have to say the quality of the material is really good. It's interesting. You know, I have to wonder why some of these outtakes were left off the albums because they're just that good. But this is m my favorite period of uh, Bob Dylan. That's why I chose to buy this one. I don't generally buy, you know, branch out into his bootleg series, but uh, this one here I'm at into the collection. Now the next one's an interesting one. So this is a uh, band website release, or in this case an artist website, because it comes from Neil Sean. So Neil Sean Universe, 10th solo album from him. Um, only available on the website so far. I mean, you can stream it. That's the inside. No booklet with it, but it goes through and tells you who performs on the tracks, who wrote it, that kind of stuff. And then there's the backside of it. But uh, good to get a physical CD edition of this release. What's kind of interesting about it is that it's put together by a uh, new Journey drummer, Narada Michael Walden. So uh, Neil asked him to put together a solo album for him. So um, Narada Michael Walden wrote five songs, selected eight cover songs on it. A couple of these come from, uh, are written by uh, Neil himself. 
but otherwise it's really not a Neil solo album in the sense that he didn't write all this material and stuff so kind of interesting but I have to say out of his last uh, two or three solo releases uh, this one here is definitely uh, the most interesting of them so uh, whatever it is that uh, Narada Michael Walden is doing in order to get uh, Neil to sound this good and the, the way that he's writing and arranging and producing it good job on it so hopefully they'll keep working together which also just makes me very interested in new journey material which i hope we get uh, fairly soon i mean at least a full length album because we have gotten one song um all right and then i picked up a couple of used things and uh, first one is uh you know replacement or something you might want to call it that but uh, queen's reich sign of the times the best of from 2007 so this one here, as you can see, is in a jewel case, and it's their second compilation album. Now, I had the two CD and a diggy pack, but those things just get beat up. I've replaced the diggy pack, and it's still not quite in the pristine condition that I want. So I need that because it's got the bonus material, um, you know, the outtakes, the demos, the B-sides, that stuff that I want. But I'm going to put that one aside, and I can just have this one that I can pull out all the time whenever I want. So in a jewel case. So nothing really new there, but uh, that one is being added to the collection. And then this one here, this was a really great find. Frida, something going on from 1982. And if that name doesn't immediately jump out to you, it's because she is vocalist with ABBA, something that I don't normally listen to. Although if you're following along with me, you know that I've been um, talking about and, and bringing up ABBA in the last few weeks since they announced their new album, Voyage, first in 40 years. So when I saw this um, and I looked into it, I wasn't initially going to pick this up, but um, I found out that Phil Collins, first of all, produced it, you know, coming from Genesis. He also plays on it. So um, that made me much more interested in this. And then, of course, I checked and it's it's all English. So her first solo album that is all English language. Um, and also just doing a little bit of research on it. Um, it was described as being a more rock effort than pop. So picked it up, brought it home. And what I didn't know is uh, the title, you know, something going on. And then um, the title track that's on here that's actually um, uh, the same thing. But I didn't know that I knew that song, that it was one that was covered by Jorn. Um, so I don't know if you know who that uh, metal artist is, a really great uh, vocalist who sounds a lot like David Coverdale, but he did a covers album and uh, that was on it. And then I found out that uh, the title track to this is that song. So it made me like this even more. Uh, really great uh, combo of things coming together and aligning, getting finding something additional from an ABBA vocalist, and then it turning out that I actually knew something from it. Plus it had Phil Collins on it. So the whole thing all the way around, really good. I would recommend it, if, especially if you're a fan of ABBA and you've never checked it out, uh, I think you'd really enjoy this. But. There you go. Uh, that, those are my new music finds, at least. Uh, number 31 and uh, 10 CDs there for you of a variety of things from new releases, uh, used band websites, stuff of that nature. So hopefully you enjoyed this. And if you did, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe. And do check the description for links to related videos in particular. I'll leave a link to the full review of uh, both the Billy Idol and I did one for Lindsey Buckingham, so you can check both those out. And if you're uh, still watching this, please consider sharing it out on social media. I would appreciate that as well. All right, everyone, take care. Have a good day, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.